I uh, hope you're able to see the last one when we had uh, Ellen Brimman talking about her book, Say This, Not That. But this uh, week we have Robert Caruso uh, and Rich, is it Cottle? Cottle, yeah. And yep. my screen is frozen right now, it looks like. My camera's not picking me up. Oh, there we go. There, Slowly. there you go. Uh, so Robert and Rich are going to be representing technology today. They're going to be talking about Bundle Post, a product I actually use personally for my own content curation. Uh, and these guys are not only going to describe what it does, but then they're going to do an actual product demonstration, and then we will open the floor for heckling after that. So uh, Margie is my co-host. Margie, you have anything to add before we get started? I would just like to say YouTube is working. YouTube is working. Excellent. And if YouTube is working, then we can function. So I'm going to turn it over to Robert, uh, the, the creator and genius behind Bundle Post, and we'll let these guys take it from there. So Robert, floor is yours, buddy. Sure. So uh, this is my first uh, 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 show with you guys. So I, I'm not sure the format, but I guess what I'll do is maybe give a little background and explain uh, where Bundle Post came from and, and so on. So what most people know, my name's Robert Caruso, I'm Fondalo on Twitter, and what they don't know, uh, most people, is that we used to be a social media agency. So we did work for clients all around the world and handled social media programs uh, for them and were really good at what we did. Uh, what I discovered as we continued to grow, and we were up to eight of us uh, at, uh, at some point, um, is that it is so human intensive when you're doing social media effectively. It really requires uh, an enormous amount of resources. And in order to figure out how to be more effective, efficient, and profitable, I decided to start off by analyzing where we all spend our time based on my requirements of how social media needed to be handled properly. And what I discovered is that we spend about 80% of our time searching, finding, editing, scheduling, hashtagging, and posting relevant, valuable content for our clients' audience across the social graph. And realize real quickly, that doesn't scale. Um, and it's not profitable. And not only that, what happens is you're not doing it efficiently or always correctly, right? If you're in a time crunch, you're, you're not hashtagging. Um, etc. or you're skipping posts. So in the scenario that that we were in uh, and, and finding out that information I decided that I was going to design a piece of tech for us internally only that uh, was never designed to be a product uh, that would make us more effective, efficient, and profitable. The short story is um, it only took us about two weeks and we realized that what we had here everybody needed. And so in short, what Rumble Post uh, is and does, it's a very, very unique um, social content management system. So I'll start left to right and we'll, we'll show you the system here in a second. But from left to right, the system allows you to uh, plug in RSS feeds and Google alerts based on the content strategies for your programs or your clients programs and our system automatically ingests that content multiple times a day all saved as social media posts and for each of those different channels for a specific client or multiple clients or your multiple uh, social media presences and so it brings it all into one place where now you can view it, edit it, manage it, remove content you don't want in your streams. It's all about controlling content uh, and the right content that you want. Second thing that the system does is it becomes the repository for you and or all of your clients. If you have multiple clients you're managing social media for, all of their proprietary social media posts. So an example would be uh, you know, your posts about the fan page that you use on Twitter, uh, posts to your blog, your website, your About Us page on your website, all of that content, videos, YouTube channels, etc., that we often forget to post uh, or we're too busy. So it puts all of that content in one place that can then be infused into the streams uh, very, very easily and efficiently. The next thing the system does is it automatically hashtags all of this client, uh, all of this content. So if you have uh, an account and 
you've got um, you're sending out 50 posts out of bundle posts you've set up a folder for that specific customer or client that you're managing their social media and you've told bundle post in that folder let's call it ABC restaurant here are all the keywords and phrases that will be found in the content that we will be sharing for them and we want the system to find those keywords and phrases and we want the system to replace those keywords or phrases with these specific hashtags. So what happens is in one second you've got 50 posts on the screen for four days, three days, five days of posts depending on how many per day you're posting for that client and in one second you call that hashtag folder for that ABC restaurant, you tell it to run, it goes through the entire screen and hashtags all that content for you. The next thing the system does uh, is it manages all of your posting schedules across the entire social graph. Twitter, fan page groups, LinkedIn, anywhere that you can post from, say, Hootsuite, uh, that you've already got your account set up, we support by default. So you don't have to connect all your social accounts into another place. You don't have to do that inside a bundle post. But in there, you would create the Twitter schedule for your client, their personal Facebook schedule. You know, one of the times per day we're going to post for each of these different accounts, okay? And it it's the repository. It hangs on to that information. You would grab this schedule with this content, and it merges them, and you tell them what day to start the posting. It You hashtag all that content and send it out. Pretty simple. Uh, the last thing the system does is it manages all of your Follow Friday mentions. So each of you, you might have 15 clients you're managing social media for, or you might have multiple Twitter accounts that you're managing for yourself. Uh, it enables you to create folders for each of those clients or accounts, and um, put what are who are the people I'm going to mention, and actually write the posts and save them all in one place. Um, what, so you know, it used to take me about three hours every Friday morning just to do my Follow Friday mentions. Customers, prospects, influencers, friends, all the folks I want to mention. And with bundle posts now, uh, it take, took me about an hour to get my initial setup done of everybody I wanted to post and how I wanted to, the text to be. And now it takes me about 45 seconds on Thursday night. And the great thing about it and why it's become very effective for us is instead of stacking Friday morning all these follow Friday posts with no valuable content, instead I control it in bundle posts. So I have a separate schedule that says here's my follow Friday schedule for Robert and I post those go in between my regular content all day long. So there's value in my stream all day and I'm uh, not overwhelming people with a bunch of stuff. So there's the short explanation. You want That's to see it real cool. quick? Robert, you want to give us real quick before we continue on the URL where people can maybe take a look at this while they're listening to the rest of the show? Absolutely. What I would recommend you do, uh, there's two places. First off, I recommend our YouTube channel. So youtube.com uh, forward slash bundle post. And then, of course, bundlepost.com is our main site. Okay? Uh, I neglected to mention, guys, uh, I've, I'm a single dad. I've got a three-year-old that I have to pick up from daycare in about uh, 15 minutes, and I'm going to stretch it as long as I can. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do, I have Rich Cottle, our director of sales and marketing. Great story. He actually was a pro user of Bundle Post for a long time, and I stole him. Uh, so uh, uh, he's doing a great job for us, but he's here. So um, I'm going to do a quick screen share, if I may, and uh, I'll show some stuff real quick, and then I'll jump out. Rich, of course, can answer any questions and all of that. So I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, meanwhile, so meanwhile, while Robert's doing that, I just wanted to say, you know, one of the key phrases he said there, you know, there's always the question about marketing automation and whether it's a good thing to do or not. Uh, my main goal is always to share great content throughout the day. So I'm wanting to provide a service to the people who have taken their time to read what I'm putting out there. But I don't want to blow it all in 15 minutes in one given morning. So using a product like Bundle Post, I can actually spread those great blog posts and everything over an entire uh, week. Um, and I think it brings more value to the readers. 
Yeah. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. yep. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to real quickly actually do a sample export. Uh, we'll kind of handle this real quick here. So uh, this is where you would actually do your setup and management of the various things I talked about, what the, the system does. Robert, Robert, hang on for a second because all I'm seeing is Yeah, the, it's just showing the Google Plus. Is the yeah. Google Share. So minimize that so we actually see your I did. Desktop. I did. Let me, let me redo this again here. Hang on. Uh, I believe, got it. Cool. There you go. Can you see there that? There we go. That's perfect. Perfect. All right. So uh, here are the different sections I talked about that the system handles that you can set up and or manage. Um, and I'm just going to hit it. So we're going to go export now uh, using a demo account here. I'm going to grab uh, this Twitter account is the schedule I want to use that's already saved in the system. I'm going to tell it I want to start posting tomorrow. Takes me to an export table. Notice there's no content here, but I have all my feed channels. So these are RSS feeds, uh, Google Alerts, etc. I can pull content from any of these. So I can pop it. Always the most recent at the top. So I can grab the most recent content from this blog and move it over. And voila, there they are, scheduled for tomorrow, 7.15, 8.30, 9.45. I can grab something from this Google alert, grab maybe the top uh, several of those of the most recent content. You notice the second feed channel is blue-green. The first is pink. I don't have to guess where, what content's what. It's all color-coded. Wow. I can jump in here and grab something from, let's go to uh, this person's blog. So this is their, their own blog, all of their latest contents in here. The top is the newest. So we'll grab their most recent ones, move those over. Notice the color difference. Nothing, I, I don't have to worry about it. This Google Alert stuff, at any time I can hit view. I can get the content, make sure, read it. Make sure it's something we definitely want to share for that client or our account. And if it is, that's great. If it's not, I can delete it. Watch what happens. Notice this is 5.15, then 6.30 p.m. If I delete it, it reschedules, moves everything up. So I can go to the My Social Content folder. So this is the stuff about us, or in this case, this client. We would grab you know, some of their posts, some of the articles about them, their book, whatever it might be. And so we never forget to talk about ourselves or our client. And we move that over. And again, it's a different color. And we can now, so what we don't want to do is talk about ourselves for, for half a day and then talk about another subject for half a day. What we want to do is we want to mix this up. So I just drag and drop, and I'm just grabbing color and mixing it with color. Wow. And it's automatically rescheduling every time I drop in. And I become hugely effective. I've got all the content based on the strategy design of Google Alerts, RSS, et cetera. Now what I'm going to do, pardon me? OK. OK. okay. okay. Now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to hashtag all this. So I'm going to call this hashtag folder that has all of the keywords and hashtags associated that we want to use for this particular client or our account. And I just simply tell it run. Boom. Look, book. It's now hashtag book. Uh, let's see. Looking for another one. Uh, hashtag Native American. Hashtag Navajo. Hashtag author. Navajo. But whatever the keywords and phrases I told the system to find and replace, it does for me. And so here we've handled, uh, this would take you about maybe 15 minutes for four days of content, so a total of 50 posts. And all I'm going to do is download this file by clicking right here at the top. I'm going to download it, save it to my computer. I'll save it on my desktop in a demo folder, let's call it. And we'll call this uh, Hangout. Uh, underscore Twitter so I know what's the account it's for and what social network did we create it for and I often will always say 913 so I know when did I export this 
I save it. I go into Hootsuite. Instead of typing a post or scheduling a post, I simply go bulk message upload. I grab that file from my computer. Hang out. Twitter 913. Open. I say, where do I want it to go? Twitter, fan page, group, LinkedIn, personal Facebook, wherever I built the file for, and I submit. For the next four days, guys, all I do is engage, build relationships, drive ROI, get results, and uh, post what's happening right now. The stuff that you don't want to schedule. And, you know, that's another interesting point you point out, Robert, because I use that content, you know, I, I use Bundle Post to spread out that content through the day, and so now I have a starting point to have my conversations and my engagement with the people I share with. And so I get a post that's spread out through the day, and then, I mean, come Wednesday, all of a sudden somebody says, hey, love the post, and now I've got engagement opportunities, but it was based upon spreading it out over an entire week. Absolutely. What we have found, um, the feedback we get from our clients is uh, so your social media agencies um, and your individual marketers and your internal brand departments, um, the overall average we hear is this number. You're 80% more effective, efficient, and profitable. If your resources are focused on having conversations, building relationships, and driving ROI, the game changes. But if you also ensure that you're never forgetting to hashtag, you're never forgetting to talk about yourself, you're never forgetting to uh, have consistent, relevant, valuable content in the stream, and most importantly, you control it all. You're not plugging an RSS that just spews whatever the heck comes through. You control it. You view it. You can edit the text of the posts. Um, you, you handle and control everything in a very efficient and effective way. Well, this is Heckler's Hangout, and Brian uses uh, Bundle Post a lot, so he's going to play good cop today, um, which I guess leaves me being bad cop and the heckler. So, I could never uh, imagine. I know it's hard to believe that I would end up this way. But, you know, I, I've had a real love-hate relationship with the whole idea of automation. So I know. Um, so... You know, we're, we're talking about all the advantages of scheduling content out over a four-day period. Sure. Let's say someone tweets out, writes a post, and you've tweeted it out, and it ends up causing a huge ruckus if you weren't really counting on having to respond to that right away, and maybe you had scheduled to repeat that post several times over a certain time interval. How do you pull that back? I mean, I, I would assume that with bundle post, it's easy to alter, alter the schedule, but is there ever a problem of you tweeting something after a post has already exploded and then having to kind of clean up a little bit? Uh, I've never experienced that, but it's really no, it's really no different margin than if you actually manually tweeted that. That's number one. Number two is that... Um, uh, you can't export out of bundle post duplicate posts at the same export. Okay. So it's it's not a spamming tool. As a matter of fact, our user agreement says um, you cannot use it for a spamming tool. And guess what? I decide whether you are or not. So <laughs> it's real simple, right? We, I, I mean, I'm a social media guy, and the last thing I want is this being used as any kind of a spamming tool. Mm -hmm. um, so the only way it's going to get in your stream multiple times is if you put it in there multiple times. Um, so you have control over that. Um, as far as um, uh, automation, I want to be very, very clear here. The only thing that's being automated is the back office. So the idea is it's bringing stuff to you so you can now manage it better and decide what goes out in a more efficient and effective way. Um, I would never, ever uh, authorize, develop, or um, promote anything that does any kind of something happens and this automatically happens. This is just a way to, to put uh, fun uh, functionality and efficiency into the back office so you can spend your time in the front office. Does that Anyone answer your question? Do you have any questions for Robert because he has to go soon and then we can attack Rich, but this is your last chance to attack Robert before he goes. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> I know. All right. See, Ari's smiling. He's been wanting to for some time now. He's plotting, but nothing is coming because Robert did such a good job with the presentation. <laughs> John, you have a question? Me? No. John? Oh, John. John, he's waving. Use your use your words. Can't hear you. Yeah, you got no audio, man. Can't yeah, John, audio. you have no audio. <laughs> but but the miming is excellent. Yes, exactly. Where's Where's Ann when we need her? Ann wrote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? We need sign language. Is that good? There yes. we go. Yeah. He has voice now. Got it. He speaks. <laughs> He's I, got, I got two minutes, man. Yeah, John. If you have a question, now would be the time. <laughs> If not, put it out on the uh, the Twitter question, and, and and if Robert has to leave, we'll we'll still be checking the, uh, I the think Twitter tag. I'm dumb again. Yeah. So, <laughs> I've got a delay. Okay. <laughs> so, so my. <laughs> my question is uh is is what when is Robert going to move past pastels? <laughs> Valid question. A valid question. Pastel. In your colors. In your colors for your export table. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> uh, well, let me just say this, John. I am 95% uh, well considered severe colorblind, so bear with us. Our new director of technology and Rich and Julia uh, will be uh, – Handling that stuff moving forward. <laughs> I'm colorblind too. So. <laughs> awesome. So we'll be looking for uh, John to help us with some color scheme. Everything uh, is gray bundle post, and we don't understand why. <laughs> okay, now I've got a trick question that I've been wanting to ask anybody, any of our tech guests, Margie, when we have them. It's like, okay, what low hanging fruit question could I ask you? About your technology, that would just allow you to knock it out of the park and just make all of us, you know, say score, or, you know, that type of thing. I mean, is it is it a new feature that's coming down the road? You've already told us about eighty percent, uh, you know, efficiency in the back office. But but what is that low hanging question you wish we would ask so you could you could just knock it out of the park? Uh, Brian, this is not my first barbecue, and I learned a long time ago in the tech business, we do not sell vaporware. So, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, do we have some huge plans? Absolutely. What I can, what I can, you know, there's two things I'll tell you that uh, we already know is um, uh, going to be in place uh, in 30 days. So, um, our new director of technology is uh, uh, really doing some amazing stuff on the back end for us. So, uh, there's there's two things that um, not only our clients but we as users of our own software have been like dying for and it's going to add another five percent I think efficiency to the overall scheme of things time frame that you spend in there the first is um, the ability to click a single button on the export table and have it automatically do the rainbow for you so yeah, I know you love that. Um, so it'll at least give you do the rainbow you... a hashtag, Robert, because I really think you guys need to jump on that. <laughs> yeah, and being the conservative I am, I think I will use a different do the term. Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it will it will mix up at least do an initial mix up for you on the content um, that you can still have control over and drop stuff at specific times you want them to go and and whatever. So that will certainly speed things up. The other thing that um, is priority on our next release is um, on the export table is the ability to write on the export table, click on the content, the text, and edit there rather than inside the, uh, the uh, feed channels before you go to the export table. Um, so that is just a no-brainer and uh, there's just a lot of script and the way it was handled was being handled wrong, so technically we're at, we're redoing some of that code, so uh, for scalability and functionality. But that's as far as I will go. Uh, I will say that uh, uh, we do have some huge plans. Um, the cool thing about it is, I guess, what makes us as a company and our product really different from a lot of stuff out there is that we didn't decide that social media was the place we should be, and we were geeks, so we decided to code some software for it. 
we actually were social media people. And this is my eighth patent on social, on not social media, but internet technology. So I've done that too, but um, we just simply wanted to solve our problem. And we realized real quickly that, you know, ev everybody really has the same problem. Um, and so, wow, we're going to be a software company in 11 months. And uh, talk about an interesting, fun transition. It was great. I so I have a little baby boy three years old that uh, is probably as well as his, as his daycare teachers are probably wondering where dad is. I'm going to jump out and uh, hopefully not get a ticket and I'm going to pass to Rick, uh, our new director of sales and marketing of uh, Bundle Post. Guys, thanks so much for having us. We really appreciate it. And, well, thanks uh, for coming. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye, right. Bye Robert. Okay, Rick, Rich. I am obligated yep. to let everyone here know that Ari and Ann are throwing mashed potatoes on Twitter. So um, oh, great. <laughs> we incorporate that into the overall experience. They are throwing mashed potatoes. Nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's happening. Um, any any questions, Ari, John, for Rich before Brian and I start doing our own patented heckling at all? Uh oh. This is the best sure? day of my life. Oh, he's yes. finally able to talk. <laughs> I was gonna say it's the best day of my life because Ari's been mute for most of this time period. Like, yeah, I muted myself as a fail safe, just yeah, in case. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But uh, all good things must come to an end. So, Brian, I think it's it's your time to uh, either play good cop or heckle, whichever whichever option you choose there. Okay, let's see. And make sure you circle me. I'm just writing to Milo right now because uh, maybe Milo will be joining us as well. Uh, Rich, I did want to add, uh, add something because, again, this is, this is being recorded. Uh, there are ways for people to try out Bundle Post, right? There's, there's like a limited version that people can try, or how does that work? Currently, yes. There's a Friends Fly Free account, which allows you one feed channel, one schedule, one you know, My Social Content folder, and a Follow Friday list. So it is very basic. You know, for some people, maybe that's all you need, I guess. But it definitely it's a way to get in there and kind of feel around with the functionality and to get, you know, your feet wet in a sense. Right, so. which I mean, I quickly, you know, I tried it, and the Friends Fly Free thing, I think I lasted for a few hours. I'm like, oh, forget this, man. I need like, the whole I need thing. it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I do, you know, it, it, several of us and, and several of the people that are going to be viewing this manage several social profiles. So yeah. when you look at you've got perhaps multiple Twitter accounts, a couple of different fan pages, LinkedIn, and now even Google Plus pages, uh, that's that bear. doesn't even cover the multiple personalities problem that I deal with. It's <laughs> yeah, I know. just ridiculous. You know, heck, I communicate with some of Margie's multiple personalities on a daily basis. So it's it's yep, but did you know she was a zombie? <laughs> <laughs> yes, all of those. They're all pastel colored, though, so it's okay. <laughs> Except the zombie one. Except that's the zombie true. one, which is cold black, but, you know, that's all right. <laughs> so, um... What else? Just on a side note to that, I mean, we are playing around with, not as well, not even playing around with, there is some new things to come in terms of for new users, free accounts, and things like that. So what's available today, not promising that same thing's going to be available a month from now or et cetera, but we are definitely reviewing some other options for people who want to test it out without actually paying for it yet. So it's in the works. Okay. Well, I knew the export table, uh, you know, again, having used it for several months, when, when I first got in there, that export table was just plain black and white. No. And, you know, yeah, I'm kind of colorblind too, John, but, you know, I'd sit there and drag things, but I'd forget which one was a blogger, which one came from the alert. And to right. tell you the truth, it's kind of annoying, but, uh, you know, Robert listened, uh, and, and so as a result, the color-coded table was handy, uh, and so now I could drag it, and I could see the different bloggers and everything, and I could never put two greens together, and that was fantastic, but right. then I'm like, then I got it, you know, you always, a person who uses software always has to get annoyed, because they always want the next enhancement, uh, Absolutely. and so I was the one that's like, man, it should be nice if you could just like click on a button, and it would just like, just, you know, rip through everything, uh, and lo and behold, it, it sounds like that's coming, so. Definitely, uh, um, yeah, that was one of my first points of feedback too because remember I came into this as an actual user I was working at another agency and ended up you know that's how I met Robert and stuff and that was our first 
saying is, hey, we need a randomizer. Soap opera. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. So we need, add, we need to add animations, Brian, because having mm-hmm. little hearts explode out right there would have been right. the drama, <laughs> <just that>. Yes. <laughs> the bundle post soap <laughs> So yeah, um, <laughs> do you find mostly uh, what's your biggest audience for this? Is it is it agencies? Is it uh, individuals? I mean, is it realtors? I mean, what you know, tends honestly, to be we have such a broad mix of people that are using it and finding it effective, even people that I wouldn't necessarily see as our ideal customer are using bundle posts. So, you know, of course we have a lot of agencies using it. We have a lot of individual marketers, a lot of freelancers, um, individual business owners that really runs the gamut. So I can't tell you that, you know, we have a 50% market share of agencies or anything like that. It's a lot more diverse than that, which is really cool to see. So it's helping us get a lot of, you know, inside aspects from other points of view that we never would have seen before. Because, again, you know, we're social media guys, but not necessarily. I don't know what goes on inside of a secretary at a law office's mind. So, right. What's the biggest challenge you guys face? Is it the regular onslaught of new platforms that you need to be able to integrate into? Or what's, you know, what's your biggest challenge? Honestly, the biggest challenge is we get so many people that love the product and love, you know, that Robert's really set a precedent for the level of customer service, you know, as he's brought on more employees and stuff. You know, the bar is pretty high of what we have to fulfill. So the fact that we're getting a lot of referral customers, a lot of people that want, you know, more in-depth looks, and then that takes, you know, partnership deals and all sorts of cool stuff that's, you know, happening. It's just really a matter of keeping up with it, which is a great problem to have. Yeah. So, right. Definitely. So any other questions uh, from our live people here? I, ha- I am going over, and I am seeing that we do have people watching us on the YouTube channel. So that's, awesome. uh, that, that is awesome, and, and this will be recorded afterwards. But any other questions um, for Rich? Okay. Or Rich, is there anything else in the product that you want to show that, that Robert had to kind of gloss over real quick? I know that you had the ability to create multiple schedules. Um, it's, it's important, you know, the whole personal content thing got glossed over, and normally I wouldn't be able to speak so much to a particular tech, but since I do use it like you have, right. uh, I can. But the personal content, you know, I used to have mixed in not only blog posts that I've written, mm-hmm. but um, – you know, I'd have eight different links to our corporate website, maybe to different landing pages and different right. descriptions, but you can even mix in content without including a URL. So, you know, not that I encourage it, it's actually annoying for some people, but right. you know how you go to some Twitter feed and you see nothing but a bunch of quotes that people yep. put in? Or what's going on today, and they asked the same question yesterday at 8.32, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I've never that's seen anything pain. like that. Really? That's a pain, but good quotes are funny. Now, what's John? John's pointing at me. Come on, man! I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was clever. He sat there pointing. See, okay, look, I'm pointing back at John too, but I can't get all the way to Margie. So John, John can speak so much with no words. He doesn't even need a larynx. It's just all in the hands. It's all in the but, hands. You know, Margie, you know that I, sh- I mean, that's one way I share your content is actually using this. So uh, I share Margie's content throughout the week, but then as soon as she responds or somebody retweets that content, mm-hmm. now I'm ready to engage. Exactly. So, so I can actually engage about it. And yes, I read the article mm-hmm. and I probably launched it from Bundle Post because you never know what Margie might write. Is this going to be something I want to share? Is it, you know, because if he starts talking about Brandon Whedon playing, you know, quarterback instead of Colt McCoy for the Browns. And that's Again, this is where we know that Brian is not supposed to heckle the co-host, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's something we're working on as we move through. Uh, if you're on Team Margie, please dial 107 now because <laughs> this is just not fair. <laughs> so, Sorry, Brian, uh, something for Margie. Yeah. Oh, we're so mean to you. People oh. aren't very mean to me. So. All right, so I'm going to click because Marge, you got to be bad cop, so you are now highlighted. Anything you want to ask about? It? I I do have a question. One of mm-hmm. the uh, big social media stories was it last year or two years ago? I've lost track of time, but um, 
you know, a person that works for the Red Cross tweeted about how fun it was to get drunk using their Red Cross account instead of their personal account. And one thing that struck me when Robert was running through how many accounts you can handle with bundle post, right. me being so cautious that if I was a turtle I would never duck my head out of my shell, I'm thinking, okay, how easy is it to think that you're setting up all of your tweets for one account, but actually it's the wrong one. So you have four days of content going out in the wrong place. Had been there, done that, yes, you can do that. Uh, I do highly recommend going through and actually double checking your posts. Once you've done the import into Hootsuite, it's really simple. You just click on which, in, while you're in your schedule, you just click on uh, what channel is going to be affected. And you can see all the content that's going to go out right there. So my mistake I made was scheduling all my Twitter content to go out on my personal Facebook. So, yeah. My friends love that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's why, you know, it, it's actually been good. For, uh, a lesson I've learned is I won't do bulk scheduling to where the, the distribution of that happens in like 15 minutes. Right? Yeah, no. So I'll literally do it to not start until the next morning. Same. which gives me time to go through and make sure. So even if I inadvertently send it to the wrong profile, right. I'm not going to have three posts go out before I realize it. Exactly. So you kind of build in that, that safety net for things like that. Right. We always recommend scheduling out for the next morning. I know in Hootsuite you're allowed to schedule as long as it's five minutes out. Do it the next morning. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm going to ask a tough question now. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that means I, I, it's going to be really baby soft. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a tough one because people who who do the the automation, obviously, there's there's other tools out there. Just like you know, there's other products that compete against against my own. But like in your case, a lot of people, and I wrote this in a pre post. What about buffer? Somebody's going to always ask, "What about buffer?" Right. Um, and I know what I do. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to hear what your statement is when people say, well, I've heard about this buffer tool as well. So how does bundle post uh, either compete against or complement something like a buffer? I would almost say buffer could complement us. Um, personally, I don't really use it. I think I have a couple times if you are online, you run across some content that works great that you didn't already have scheduled and you want to, okay, I want to just get this out in the next couple hours. Go ahead and throw it in there. Um, we have quite a few claims to our patents as for what bundle post covers. So I don't see buffer as a threat by any means. Um, I do think it's a great tool that can complement what you're already doing, you know, with bundle post. So, Right, and, and that's, you know, just for the, uh, if you want to go and read the, the pre-posts, what I do is I use bundle posts to set up my week. It's the framework for my week. Right. But then I use buffer throughout the week to fill in the gaps. Just to get in, yeah, exactly. When you a lot of people do the same. exceptional that you want to share, right, then uh, you're not going to go both bundle posts and do that way. So bundle right. posts for the framework and then buffer. What? Losing Brian. We're right. Losing Brian. Oh, I'm out there for a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I was I was curious what your guys' stance was. I know how I use it, and I see a, I see a, a way that both of them coexist, and I actually had to pay versions of both. Right. Um, but uh, I was curious if you got to ask that question. So. Absolutely. Yeah. That was a bad cop question, Margie. So now you have to ask a good cop. <laughs> a good cop question. Hmm. Um. Well, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, hi, Mara, how are you? Um, it seems like a, a lot of different platforms these days are trying to create a centralized location where content can come from. Mm -hmm. um, how, are, how are you seeing the big picture landscape? I mean, it, it almost seems like centralizing platforms are now popping up faster than new social media platforms. How, yep. how do you think that's all going to sort of carry on for the next six months to a year? In terms of dashboards for content management and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's Hootsuite's been around for a while now. There's always been TweetDeck. You know, they got bought by Twitter and there's a million more. And you're right, they're sprouting up every other day. 
some of them have some cool functionality, some of them don't. Uh, I honestly, as long as social media is going to be around, which looks like quite a long time, um, there's going to be people, you know, trying to reinvent the wheel. So as new platforms come out and gain popularity, you know, we are looking at exporting into those as well. Until then, I believe Hootsuite does have pretty much the market share on that. So, you know, it's really one of those things that I think people who are a lot newer to social media and aren't necessarily as stuck in their ways are going to take advantage of different dashboards in a sense. But as opposed to, you know, people like me or even you, I'm sure, you know, once you're used to using a platform, you're probably not going to leave it just for... You my know. new platform becomes my teddy bear. I am the, I call myself the Amish person of the social media world. Uh -huh. I still don't have an iPad. Tom, <laughs> you know. Who needs an uh, iPad? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it took me a good six months even to try Hootsuite because I was like, columns are too much. I do not understand columns. This is like, right. whoa. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely am uh, technophobic rather than techno-loving. So, um, for all of you that are on that wavelength, I, I'm, your, I'm your person. I sympathize. But and you see who I picked for my co-host. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's why we're doing this multi-platform, really complicated thing, because I'm so technophobic that I just, Brian decided to throw me into the 50-foot end of the swimming pool and see if I sunk or not. So, and then hold her down from And the then hold me down. And <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I swear. Um, anyway, good to know. So any, any questions from any of you other folks before Brian and I continue hurling questions Rich's way? Rich, the, uh, the audience on Twitter wants you to know that you bear a resemblance to James Franco. So <laughs> I've heard that before, yes. <laughs> From feeling mashed potatoes to celebrity look-alike contests, we have it all going on. Sounds good. And I don't yeah. want to cut this short either, just to let you know, I do have another webinar I ha I'm hosting here in 10 minutes. So <laughs> well, that's exactly when we end. How all right. scheduling? <laughs> Perfect. So no 20-minute post Q&A session, then, is what you're saying? Not today, unfortunately. All right. Cool. Ari is the Union of Anti-Automotion Marketers. That's good. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Any other questions about bundle post from our ever-loving peanut gallery? Well, here's a, a, a more of a suggestion than a question. It's just this okay. whole concept of the hashtags. Like, we've seen hashtags like explode and go awfully wrong. Like I think the GOP bought one recently and it didn't, you know, failing agenda I think it was. Right. H how are you helping your customers make sure they don't put the wrong hashtags in their in their stuff? Like and you know and also just and there's also the whole concern of this can go out on any platform and we'll just grab anything and stick it anywhere and and I just feel like that's not helping anyone either and and I'm not sure I agree with the response that we got earlier about no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just when the hard question was coming. <laughs> nice. Uh, can, you, can you attack the first part of Ari's question while yeah, this person in time? Definitely. So with the way that the hashtagging works currently, it's basically just, you know, replacing an if this, then that. Okay, you know, anyway, there's a few things in there, so I'll let you respond. You, you froze, Ari. Yeah, so you froze for a minute there. Your first half, and then you can come right. back. Second half. Okay, yeah, so answer the first half. All right, cool. All right, so with the way the hashtag's currently set up, it's simply replacing if this, then that. You know, if it sees social media, it replaces it with hashtag social media. Um, you, the user, are expected to know what hashtags work and what don't. You know, I can't keep you from creating giant social media faux pas. Unfortunately, if we could, we could charge a million dollars for this platform easily, you know, per user. But... And that's one of the things that goes into it. You know, you can't, like the GOP did, like there's been a lot of hashtag faux pas lately I've seen where things have gone very, very wrong very quickly. That's the nature of social media. So, you know, we can help you get set up, help you, you know, with your intentions. Okay, this is what your target market look at, looks at. This is what kind of hashtags you should be using. You know, I can't go in there and control your use after that. Uh, currently, you know, you would have to add specific hashtags. So if you want to just take one post 
and then at the end of it, add a hashtag that's you know only related to you. You're going to have to do that in the editing side, and that means you personally want that to be associated with it. So it's not something that's automated. That would be done by you, and then scheduled. So what was the second part of your question? Did that cover it first off, though? Like, um, I think so. I mean, I don't know because you all you did say we're not responsible for how you use it, but at the same time, you're saying we do recommend certain hashtags. So I'm a bit confused. With all of our pro users, we give you setup and training on how to use the bundle post system. There's, you know, I can't control, you know, what you do with it after there. If you want to replace, you know, every time you see Romney replaces it with hashtag moron or Obama, same thing or whatever, you can do that. That's on you. You're taking us into political hackling. I'm glad you did that on both sides of the aisle. So I'll just yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting hot. All right, over did you have the second part of that question? Well, I mean, I guess part of it also sort of like cross posting gets a bit dangerous, and I, and I think it's the idea that yeah, you can take this post and put it everywhere, and you know, I mean, like the same post doesn't work in the same context Absolutely. everywhere. Hashtags yeah. only work on Google Plus and. Uh, and Twitter, uh, and right. you know, and, and things like that. So it's sort of like it, that's yeah. also a bit dangerous. They will, will stick the same thing everywhere, exactly the same way that it appears everywhere. It and really yeah, work. I don't recommend that at all. And we, you know, specifically when we are helping people get set up, that's one of the things. You know, you only use the best content that's Facebook related for Facebook. You know, create a separate schedule, set up special alerts, use specific content sources for that platform. I don't recommend, you know, setting up your Twitter feed and then pulling, you know, that same feed and just taking those 50 things and scheduling it out for three a day into Facebook and Google Plus. And you can do it, but that's redundant. You know, it's missing the whole point of each individual social network as an individual. So it's doable again, but it's not recommended. And honestly, if you're the per type of person who's going to be using bundle post uh, either as an agency, a marketer, or you know as an actual business, you probably know better than that. You hope so. Are there some? <laughs> you mentioned that. Are there? Are there some like best practices that you kind of uh, guide? You know, just like what I'm already saying with the hashtag. So, are there some best practices as you're given that initial training that you're like, hey, here's what not to do. Uh, here's some t here's some common stumbling blocks. As soon as you add automation to your mix, are there things that you kind of tell them so that they don't stumble over the same things that a lot of other people do? Because you know, everybody initially, when when you started getting integration with all the channels, everybody's like, "Oh, I'll just send my Twitter feed to LinkedIn and Facebook. Right, everything right. I do," and that was obviously the wrong thing to do. Absolutely. So, do you provide some guidance that way, or what? Individually, yes. And Robert as a whole, you know, a lot of our users do follow his, you know, weekly blog posts and stuff. And he goes into the more of the mechanics and mentality behind what makes, you know, social media work in different aspects there. So we don't really, we've had a, the luxury of not having to train everybody from ground zero because they're already doing research on their own. They're already listening to, you know, him and other you know, great sources out there on what they should be doing. So definitely, you know, if when we're setting people up and going through, you know, strategizing, okay, here's what your business is, here's what your end user is, you know, what are their interests, how do we grab content from sources that would be interesting to them, we'll definitely, all right, so let's set you up with this specific stuff for Facebook, this is going to be what's going to work best on Twitter, you know, and then they can go in and refine from there. Um, as a marketer, that's one of the other things going way back, but uh, that you touched on earlier, something that Robert might have passed by, that's what really sold me on bundle post was the ability to look at Twitter and, you know, other platforms kind of as a section for me to host ad copy. So with your My Social content, anybody can say, hey, check out my latest blog post. But the ability to take the analytics and go in and refine, all right, today I'm going to tweet out, check out my latest blog post. And then tomorrow I'm going to say, you know, here's my latest blog post, check it out. Very small variations, but using the analytics that are built into Hootsuite with the ability to actually segment that data, you can really start getting some good details and some uh, data in on how your actual, you know, followers and fans are responding. So that's kind of been one of my favorite points about bundle posts that a lot of people don't really look at.
I think okay. we have time and for I, one I more apologize. question. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I, I, you know, Chris Westfall, the uh, king of the elevator speech, was with us last week, and we asked Ellen to, to give a short everything you need to know about her book. So we'll put you on the spot for a couple minutes, Rich, with everything we need to know about Bundle Post. But okay. is there one more question, one more quick question before... I wanted to, uh, Barchi, I wanted to jump in because I didn't realize that John had put something in the chat. My, my bad, John. Uh, you got two questions. So there's one of them is, can this be used for syndicating content? Uh, I think the answer to that is actually no, right? Well, it's, it, it just depends. So talk, talk about that first one. So can it be used for syndicating content? Right. Well, that's what I want. Like, schedule, syndicating content can mean a lot of things. Um, <laughs> That's why I want to know how to attack this. All right, I'm reading. Let's see. Yeah, so if you got the chat open, it, yeah, it's going to chat be used for syndicating content. Uh, and, uh, you know, he just clarified stuff that he finds that he wants to repost. Um, and and I think the absolute <laughs> answer is yes. But uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Uh, stuff that you find that you want to repost, by all means, that's a way that I start setting up my feed channels too. You know, you'll come across a great post by somebody and it's, all right, I want to use that. You throw it in your My Social Content folder. Now it's there for life. But then go back, look at their blog or website or wherever you got it from, and then set up a feed alert for that as well. So now you have them as a feed channel and that specific post to be used as your My Social Content, which you can schedule out indefinitely if it's timely and timeless information. Okay, and then the other question that John had here was, how does this scale for enterprise users? Absolutely. So our Bundle Pro Post Pro is unlimited feed channels, unlimited you know accounts of any sort. So we have ad agencies with you know 300 actual accounts that they manage using one Bundle Post system. So the scalability is endless. All right. I think that's the only questions I really see in the chat. We are wrapping up at 6 o'clock right now. Uh, so I know you had to get off to a webinar, Rich. We appreciate you and Rich joining, or you and uh, Robert joining. Margie, anything to add, my dear co-host? Uh, Rich, just, uh, you know, within 30 seconds, uh, summarizing everything everyone should know about Bundle Post. Okay. All right. With everything you need to know about Bundle Post, uh, it's very easy to use set up and manage your content you know for the next two to four days in under 15 minutes you know which will maximize your back office time and minimize the amount of waste that you're really spending so that way you can focus on actually building engagement and turning your social media into an actual social experience so that's okay uh, and if you're reading the chat you know while we're all smiling <laughs> okay. Luckily, we're John can't talk tonight that's all i'll say about that Thank you so much for awesome, joining us, you. Rich. We appreciate it. Definitely. You guys have Thanks a Thanks for joining, Hecklers. Uh, we'll see you next week when we're with uh, Rick Dragon, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. Okay, good. Thank you Thanks, for Rich. everyone good. watching on YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. We appreciate it. We'll be back next week. Bye. <laughs> All right. Goodbye.